Hello and welcome to Invertebrate Paleontology and Paleobotany. This is a lecture 10 in which we'll try to answer the question, what does a fossil community tell you about the periodicity of catastrophic events? Uh, in particular, we're going to look at fossil communities and how fossil communities change through time. We will look at what constitutes a fossil community and how that community may be represented geographically within the temporal framework of a particular geologic unit. But before I begin, I wanted to let you know that this time of year, in, uh, as we go into October, is the National Fossil Day, which occurs usually the second week in October. This year it's October 14, 2015. You should check it out. There's a bunch of resources on the internet. Um, about this uh, National Fossil Day. Um, the National Park Service puts it on to raise awareness of paleontology as a field of science. So check out National Fossil Day. This is the logo for the 2015 National Fossil Day. The spatial distribution of a population is a really important consideration in paleontology. Often certain organisms are found in association with other um, organisms in a non-random occurrence. This is because key species establish a supportive environment for other organisms, either as providing um, habitat or food or a particular niche of other organisms. In the marine setting, there is also the element of chance, as many of these organisms have larval stages that rely on currents and different types of substrate that will facilitate their metamorphism and change into the adult sessile forms. And these include many mollusks and coral species. Once established, these key species provide further habitat and resources for additional species. Here's a figure of a particular uh, coral reef documenting the occurrence of different species in the environment. Fossil communities are any natural assemblage of species living in a given area. We can focus on a single species and the potential interactions that species has with the environment, and this is called autoecology. Or we can study the interaction of additional species within their environment, and this is called synecology. The only difference between autoecology and synecology is the focus of the study. Note that fossil communities are simply the co-occurrence of fossils within the same geological and geographical setting. We may not be able to work out the interactions specifically, but we can assume the interactions of the fossils occurred if they're found in the same locality. A recurrent community is a special kind of community in which the component species of the community commonly occur together. We'll be looking at reef communities that commonly reoccur in the fossil record. Whether a fossil community is established or not in a particular rock unit depends on the available resources. These can be limiting factors such as oxygen, living space, and food, but also water depth, salinity, and temperature. Another factor is whether there is competition with other species or even predation or parasites that would also limit certain species from being found within the community assemblage. Ecological succession is the transition of the community over time toward a climax community. That, and, and this is a very important principle in ecology. It's the idea that time is often required for the settlement of key species, and with each new species, it facilitates new niches within the assemblage for additional organisms to join. Thus, over time, the community will become more diverse and reach a climax community, or a community assemblage that is at equilibrium. Identifying how long a climax community takes to establish itself is an important part of paleoecology. Let's now focus on organic reef communities, which are in particularly important part of marine paleontology. Ancient fossil reef communities offer three major advantages for paleontology. The first is that most of these reef forming species have very rigid skeletons that can easily preserve. Second is the skeletons actually form a framework of binding and trapping additional fossils that can often preserve organisms within their life positions and or limit transport. And third, they provide a continuous record over very long periods of time. And that is why ancient fossil reefs are a great 
communities to study in the fossil record. Reefs have an energy gradient across the shoreline, which is related to the tidal velocities and wave action. Key species can inhabit different portions of this energy gradient, um, from muddy offshore habitats to shallow reef habitats that form encrusting zones and coral heads, as well as near the shore, which is buffered by surf and subjected to the exposure during low tides. Catastrophic events, either global or local changes, can disrupt a fossil community. One such example is the loss of beneficial zoanthia found in corals. If these symbiotic bacteria die, either by changes in the CO2 in the ocean water or changes in the water depth preventing photosynthesis, the corals that provide the framework of the community will die. Such catastrophic events often result in decreased species richness and even local or global extinctions. In these more dissolute geographic zones, pioneer species can then colonize. In this example of the Silurian fossil reefs, the early pioneer species are trilobites, gastropods, sponges, and stromatolites like forms, which don't need the shelter to provide um, for a more diverse reef complexes. However, as the early community becomes more established, it moves into a more intermediate stage where species of cephalopods, camarata, bryozoa, and tabulata corals can grow and thrive. As the community moves toward a climax community, tabula coral and stromatoporids just take off, making for a reef that is wave resistant and a complex fossil community. Such successions of communities have been documented in a number of geological units and often found to repeat as recurrent communities. In this example from the Cretaceous, rudis bivalves from the Cretaceous provide the framework of reef establishment that results in a progression toward a more complex, species-rich, climax community over time. Biological limiting factors and the ecological succession of ancient reefs have a profound impact on the deposition of carbonate systems and is a key principle in sequence stratigraphy and petroleum exploration of carbonate systems. Understanding the past environment as well as what requirements are necessary for the succession of carbonate reef complexes are important in understanding the geographic distribution of hydrocarbon reservoirs of petroleum, but also provide a key to understanding why some regions lack ancient reef complexes while other areas contain abun abundant ancient reefs. One last thing we should look, touch upon in this lecture is preservation models, or thinking about how well preserved these fossil communities are in the different environments. Here we're going to look at comparing three models. Model one is a community that lives in a restricted area on the seafloor. This is below the low tide mark, but above weight base, and the water is at low velocity, but it can increase at times. Um, the substrate is composed of clastic sediments like mud or sand, with infrequent burial with rapid sediment, maybe coming off the continental shelf. In this case, transportation of the organisms is very low, as well as the exposure of those organisms. So the fossil community likely reflects the actual community that lives in that environment. Model 2 is an environment kind of like Model 1, but now with more exposure, such as found in tidal flats. Burial can still be rapid, and there are periods of time that water levels drop and when these, these events occur, this exposes organisms to the air. Such environments will have slightly higher levels of exposure and also possible transportation of organisms that live in different communities within that geographic area. The third model is an environment which is subjected to maximum wave base within the surf zone, as well as exposure during low water. Such environments exist along rocky shores proximal to the coastline. Such environments will have um, high levels of transport and exposure. And such, we can be a, a little less certain on particular fossils that would be associated with this environment. They were likely may have been transported from elsewhere. Such environments provide less reliable information about the fossil community since we're less sure of the presence of all the members of the community, since only those durable organisms with hard shells latching onto those rocky shorelines will 
will be preserved. These models are important to consider when looking at the ecological succession and fossil communities in the geological record. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in a geology class at Utah State University, check out the website geology.usu.edu. And if you're interested in my research, check out my website at benjamin-berger.org. Thanks for watching. Take care.